Today's short episode is yet another roundup of lesser known coder tips, tricks and features that only pro coder users know. To be honest with you, I didn't know about them either and only got to learn them recently. And on this day, I can't wait to share them all with you. Let's go. Tip number one is all about making your workflow faster. Use keyboard shortcuts to speed up your workflow. For example, press Ctrl Shift K or Command Shift K if you're on a Mac to switch between table, canvas and detail views. You can also use Ctrl Shift M to merge selected cells and Ctrl Shift S to save your changes. There are many more shortcuts to explore, so make sure to check out the full list in the help center. And you can also create your custom shortcuts by going to the settings and selecting keyboard shortcuts. Tip number two, when it comes to UI, take advantage of Coda's powerful charting capabilities. Not only can you create basic charts like bar graphs and pie charts, but you can also create more complex visualizations like scatter plots and heat maps. You can also create custom visualizations using HTML and CSS. To do this, create a canvas, add an HTML component and then add your code. You can then use libraries like d3.js or chart.js to create interactive and dynamic charts. Tip number three, you all know how Coda's formula language is powerful and flexible, but it can also be a bit daunting to new users. One lesser known feature is the ability to use the sequence formula to generate a list of dates. For example, if you want to create a list of dates for the next seven days, you can use this formula sequence from today to today plus six, comma one, comma day, and this will generate a list of dates starting with today and ending six days from now. Tip number four is a document performance tip. If you have a large document with many tables and formulas, you can improve performance by using the recalculate option. This allows you to manually trigger a recalculation of all formulas rather than having Coda recalculate them all automatically. To do this, go to file, then recalculate and select the formulas you want to recalculate. Now tip number five, and it's a dog customization tip. Do you know that you can customize the look and feel of your Coda dogs by using themes and custom CSS? You can choose from a variety of themes, fonts and colors to create a look that matches your branding or personal style. To access these options, go to settings and then custom CSS. From there, you can add your own code or import it from <laughs> Oh god, I cannot do this anymore. I hope by now you could see that all of this was complete nonsense. After all, check out the date when this video was published. But if you're now about to get mad at me that I wasted your time on an April Fool's joke like that, hold on for a second, I actually didn't. Just like with all of my stuff, I did this intentionally to teach you a valuable lesson. You see, all of these tips were brought to you by none other than Code AI. That's right, this is the kind of answers you get from Code AI or ChatGPT, which are basically the same kind of thing, when you're using these to help you with your formulas or Coda stuff. And honestly, I see it all the time in the community, in Coda chats. Newcomers to Coda just choose to trust GPT answers. Well, here they are exposed. None of these AIs actually know Coda. All they did was analyze a bunch of documentation for Coda and similar tools like Notion, Sheets, Asana, Airtable and whatnot. And then dream up something that's ever everything and nothing at the same time. And when it suggests you features or formulas that don't exist, that's just funny, but at least it's not malicious. But sometimes it will actually give you advice that is bad. Like at some point it suggested me this tip, which is actually wrong. It's the other way around. You should always use filters and forget about the lookup function because that one is not optimized. And it's not just my know-how, it actually reads so in the official documentation. So yeah, I am not an AI skeptic. I actually use AI to help me with my stuff. Like when I I need some sample data in my doc for the demo, I would usually ask Code AI to generate it for me because it's the fastest way how I can get it. But at the same time, this is about where it will end for me. Like, will I generate a sample service agreement with Code AI for one of my videos? Hell yes, totally, I would do it. But will I sign this agreement with an actual client? No, because I'm not a lawyer and I have no skills to verify if this will ever pass as anything legal and stay in court if push comes to show. Maybe signing this piece here will have no legal power whatsoever. And I believe it's the same with using AI for everything else. Like use it to automate your stuff, but only if you're skilled enough to verify what it gave you. And if it's actually good or a pile of BS like this list of tips. AI will neither replace you nor me because the truth is to use it, you still have to learn. And it's the best if you can learn from reputable sources like yours truly. So please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel. You can also support me on my Patreon, watch all my other videos that you skipped over and I see you in the next one. Cheers.